Today, I am very happy to finally be able to conduct this remote Q&A session. It has been a long time in making it happen, as I've been hoping to do this for the last year or so, ever since I met my current guest, Nay Muzin. He is a former captain in the Myanmar army, then became involved with the pro-democracy movement and spent a number of years in jails for that. He was able to escape house arrest in Myanmar after the coup and now is a member of the resistance, working currently with the Kreni who are very actively fighting the junta. He has a very active presence in online media, raising awareness, including with his own YouTube channel, which I shall link to in the description. And as a result of all this, he has an intimate knowledge of the situation in Burma currently, and so I hope you find this all very interesting. So without further ado, let's begin. I am the third child born in June 1975 of the five siblings in the humble, humble family in a suburb of Yango. My family had struggled to make ends meet because my father's salary as a clerk in a government office is barely enough to support the family. My mother had to supplement the family income by selling snacks in front of our house. I had to sell my mother's snacks as a hawker in the streets after my school time. I remember that at the time I am eight years old. I passed my uni entrance examination in 1993. Back in 1994, all the universities were closed by the military government because of student unrest. The military school was the only option to carry on my education. At the same time, I thought that serving in the army might give me life security while fulfilling my desire to play an active role in defending the people and the country. I was a cadet in the 39th batch of Defense Services Academy, opened it at Ping Uluin. I started my career as a lieutenant in Light Infantry Regiment No. 19 in 1998. I then served as a senior captain in Number 262 Military Police Company in Dongji, Shan State, in 2003. While taking responsibility as a senior officer for the security of the high ranking personnel in, in the Army, I found the predicts and work culture in the Army totally unacceptable. That made me decided to leave the army. At the time of the 2021 military coup, I was in prison as a prisoner of conscience for two years. My fifth imprisonment for being a democracy advocate between 2011 and 2023, I spent a total of nearly seven years jail sentences during this period. I was then placed under house arrest in August 2022 after signing an agreement to remain quiet for two years and then I released from prison. In April 2023, my family and I secretly escaped to Chiang Mai in Thailand with the help of the KMU. Since then, I've been playing the role of online media propaganda activist. I slipped back into the Kreni state in early December to take a more active role in the resistance. The interim 
Administrative Council of Ukrainian State appointed me as the director of the Committee for Righteous Multipersonal to oversee the recruitment, resettlement, and placement of the personnel joining the People's Fold. I'm also involved in persuading those who are still reluctant to join hands with us and extending necessary assistance. Only one word will suitably describe the current state of the fascist army, Muriband. Muriband. It is evidenced by massive defections of desire to do so, including the upper echelons in the army, according to my sources inside the army. A few of the very good examples being the surrender of six lieutenant colonels and about 4,000 soldiers in Lao Kai, in northern Shan state, and also mass surrender in Rakhine state. After talking to many of the captured or surrendered personnel, I will say almost 80, nearly 80% 80 of the army men, including the officer, no longer want to serve in the brutal Mianlines fascist army. Many are stealthy trying to waste to escape. The main reason for their reluctance is because their families back in the base camps have been held as hostages. hostages. Another being the mutual distrust between the army units planted by the generals corning tactics of divide and control. Many perished in such conflicts it is learned. It is a high time that the international community should view the current problem on a regional perspective, not as an internal affair of Myanmar. Based on my 12 years personal experience in the army, it won't be wrong to say that fascism is resurgent in Myanmar, so-called Burma. After being exported to it during the World War II 70 years ago. Lawless, cruel and undisciplined acts committed against its own people by the gen gender, using aerial strikes and highly lethal modern weapons have been resisted by the suffering people using whatever is available at hand just to rid our lands of military dictatorship and build a federal democratic union. Outright international assistance is crucial not only to reach this goal, but also to maintain regional stability and most importantly, to contain the spread of resurgent armed fascist tyranny internationally. Of course, the policy and actions toward Myanmar by our neighbors, Thailand, China, and also India, will greatly influence what will happen in Myanmar. It is hoped that our neighbors will play a pivotal role and deeply get involved in ending military dictatorship in Myanmar with deep understanding so that such a terrible negative influence will not spread within the region. For the sake of our noble cause, any kind of pragmatic and lawful cooperation with any foreign country is acceptable as long as it doesn't infringe the sovereignty and territorial integrity of our Union. It is obvious that lack of sufficient manpower in the military re resulting from having 
casualties and mass defections has led the gender to issue such an order. First, I think, they want to reorganize and control the non cdm servants, uh, that is, uh, those not involved in the boycott call civil disobedient movement in the governing bodies. Second, this order uh, will open uh, an avenue for them to extort money from the people who are willing to pay for their freedom. Third, mass exodus of young people into Thailand will provide Thailand with cheap labor from which they, they will exploit the people in the form of forced taxation and foreign currency to fill their coffers. This needs collaboration from the, the Thai side, of course. Currently, currently, quite a sizable number of urban youth contacted us to join the resistant forces. This raised some problem of accommodating, training and arming these young people in a very short time frame. Almost all of the ethnic resistance forces made it clear that we are moving towards the federal union. I strongly believe that. I would like to reiterate my suggestion to my friends and brothers who are still in the army to join hands with us before our union is totally destroyed by the fascist generals. The world's history has shown many examples of destruction and human suffering because of fascism. Finally, I am determined and firmly believe that we will succeed in building our new federal democratic union before the end of this year. Thank you.